Welcome to the HWM YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about our experiences having just completed the Install Classic with Robert and Akuri Batelli in this beautiful Aston Martin speed model. So Robert, thank you for joining us today. Um, we had a terrific time on. We, we did, absolutely, yes, yeah. And uh, I, I think it was a really nice introduction for you into the world of classic pre-war rallying. For sure. So for, for me, um, I've been lucky enough to do all sorts of interesting car events, but um, classic rallying is something that was completely new. So I didn't really know what to expect, um, but it was a fascinating experience to, 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 um, to complete the rally and in something so special as the speed. Yes. And, and so we had a, a short period of teaching you to drive this car. So uh, you came up for about and drove the car for about an hour out of Akira Vitelli and then off we went. So I was going to just start by asking, how did, how did you find the rally? What, what are your impressions from the trip? Well, so first of all, yes, yeah, so the, the, the tuition beforehand um, was enormously useful. So I, um, I had to get used to this gearbox in terms of double the clutching. Um, I, and it, inevitably, it's that experience of crunching some gears to begin with and just re-coordinating. So um, driving down the country lanes in and around Akiri Patelli, and you've got some, some lovely roads around you, haven't you? Yes. Um, it took all my concentration. And, um, but there was something wonderful about that because I, I think those hobbies that, that do steal all of your concentration are enormously relaxing because they kind of take, take you away from everyday life. You just solely concentrate on what you're doing. So um, it, it was not only useful, but, but it kind of got me hooked straight away yes. having, having driven this car. So that, that was lovely. And we had beautiful weather. It was just a, a wonderful British day and some lovely country lanes. So um, great little loosener. I couldn't say at that point that I knew the car intimately. Um, it was still a case of throwing yourself in at the deep end as, as the rally started. So, um, uh, yeah. It, I would say that these cars are to a degree challenging to drive, so they're not like a modern car. However, they're not so difficult that it, it's some impossible mountain that people can't achieve fairly quickly. So Guy was actually fairly typical, about an hour session, got the hang of it, could understand fairly quickly if something had gone wrong, why, and, and remedy it, so that by the time we got to, to Austria, um, the, the, the rate of progress was, was very rapid. I, I should point out that the Curie Patelli team, and Robert in particular, are very used to um, typical people like me learning how to use a car like this. So they're, they're very calm, very patient, and, and therefore it, it made the learning experience um, far easier. You didn't wince early doors every time I crunched some gears, and that was, that was helpful as well, so thank you for that. So having got to grips with the car, how did you find the Enstall Rally itself? So I, I thought, first of all, the organisation of the event was incredible. Um, so it, it, it's beautifully put together. The roads they've selected are just stunning and they're just such a fantastic mix. But I really enjoyed also the huge mix of cars that you see on an event like this. And it's kind of anything, I think, was it 1972 and older? Yes. Yes, I think yeah. that's right, yes. So we normally inhabit the very oldest bit, so we don't tend to see the, the more modern cars, but this was car number 22. Uh, typically, an event like this will start car number one is the oldest, so we were definitely in the older portion, but it was somewhere in the 70s was the newest car. I, and that kind of comes with its advantages, driving a, a, an older car, because you get to set off earlier, mm. don't you? So you, you get the clearer run, you get to lunch earlier, you get to dinner earlier, so um, yeah, that, that, that was really good. Um, so I, I love the driving, I love the mix of cars and lots of enthusiasts there. And you could, you could kind of take the event as you wanted. So it, clearly there are some people that go that take it super, super seriously. Um, they are there to, to, to complete the time trial elements and so on to millisecond precision. And there's other people who are just enjoying some amazing roads and a bit of fun with, with, with the time sections. And I think we, we probably sat somewhere in between. Um, and I also like the fact that you can, 
you can you can use it as just a gentle tour or there are those people that go out and really drive those roads and um, uh, perhaps up the pace a little bit and you know that that's that's wonderful too um, and finally the, the the thing for me that that I I liked to see was the mix of combinations in the cockpit so you could see husband and wives you could see friends doing it together you could see father and sons doing it together but everybody was having a really special time um, so that was great I it, it, the other thing I, I, I found um, appealing about the event is that it is it's not a gentle two-hour waft around the country roads you cover some serious ground so particularly when you're driving a car like this um, you feel like you've really achieved something when you you, you, you complete the rally because um, I mean we would have done a it was some kilometers. yes it, the event, the days one and two, were about 450 kilometres each, plus the driving turn from the start and a bit on day three. So we would have clocked up about a thousand kilometres in a day and two, two and a bit days. And I think the significance of that is um, they were on often on tight, twisty roads. Um, often there were, or every day there were there were points where where you had these brake sections where they'd have time trials of various sorts and so I mean that that's that's a very full day but I enjoyed the fact that it's a very full day you you don't go on a driving trip to not drive you want to drive and get involved but talking about those interludes I I loved the fact that they'd laid on all sorts of bits during the course of the day that added an extra element of interest to the event so we did everything from an airfield strip Time drive. In fact, we did a couple of those. We found ourselves on a go-kart track. We found ourselves on the Salzburg ring. I mean, it was just brilliant. And those time sections, again, you could take them in different ways. You could take them as an opportunity to drive the car on its door handles, or perhaps be a bit more um, uh, thoughtful in terms of getting the timing just right for the time trial. But but either way, it's tremendous fun. Absolutely, yes, yes. And I, for me, I enjoy that as well, rather than just a tour. It's a tour plus some interesting things to try and achieve in a car, which which uh, both in terms of navigation and the, the uh, co-driving side, but also as a driver, trying to uh, hit the various targets. Um, I find a lot of fun above and beyond just the scenery and as you said the amazing roads which are absolutely stunning. So the final thing for me um, that was really critical about the event that I enjoyed was it was really easy to compete yes. and what I mean by that is you guys at Curie Patelli took care of everything so we were able to fly out there so it could be time efficient because unfortunately I've never got enough time. Um, we drove, we enjoyed it, we had the benefit of technical support so there was no worries there and should something have happened we'd have most likely been able to get restarted and back on the event and we saw that in action with one of the other cars that was working with us so um, that car did not lose its day it just had momentary downtime so all, all of that support meant that I could kind of fly out there enjoy the event have this amazing time and then jump on the plane and fly back again and the cars were sort of prepped ready when we landed and disappeared back to the UK to a Curie Patelli afterwards and so um, that made it so accessible and just meant that I could concentrate on having fun which wasn't a chore. So here we are on the final day of the Enstall Classic and as has been the theme all the way through there are particular little events within the larger event and today we've got a timed hill climb so Robert has put me in the driver's seat. So you've done this before, Robert? I did, yeah, I did it last year. Um, it's quite a cool thing to do. So we're going at, uh, it's nearly nine kilometres. Let me try and show you. There's, uh, we're in the queue. So we've got 14 minutes to do nine kilometres up uh, uh, a course, which is lots and lots of switchbacks. It actually takes us up to the start of the ski resort. Um, it's great fun. So the real trick is we've got to get up in a set time. So not too fast, not too slow. Um, 
but uh, for Rob's experience, it's, it's a bit of a pace we need. So should be fun, should be um, uh, uh, an entertaining event, and then um, we'll see how we get on later in the day when we see the schools. So we thought we would just talk about five things that we think you need to know if you are going to do a classic car event. Um, and where I thought we would start, Robert, is having the appropriate layers, and this was hard learnt, possibly. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, and I say it was hard learnt, we actually had the appropriate layers, and sometimes you've just got to make a decision, and there, there was at certain points in the install classic where we saw the odd shower coming, we drove through, yeah. we warmed up again, it was all good. Um, and we were making such good progress, I think, on day two, as we approached the mountain section. And we could see a few clouds on the, on the horizon and thought, it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be all right, and it's quite warm, yeah. Keep your toe in. It was quite, quite war, warm at, um, I don't know what altitude we were, but, but far lower than, uh, than we were due to reach. But there was a point where we climbed the mountain, having not stopped, absolutely our own fault. But um, the rain came down. It was biblical, wasn't it? Well, it came down and it came across as well, yes. It, it was so cold, it, was, it took my breath, breath away for about an hour. It was like jumping in cold water for an hour. Um, it's constant. But um, it was... It was so cold, it was funny. Yes. Um, so it was all part of the event, and actually we, we made great progress that day. It, you don't have to do that on an event like this. And I have to say, it's quite rare. I've done quite a lot of these events, and it, that's quite unusual to get rain like that. Yes. Yeah, fair. But definitely, um, right layers would have made that a bit more comfortable, but you know, we wouldn't have got to dinner as quickly. Would that's true, absolutely. Every cloud and all that. <laughs> so the second point we'd like to make is you've got to decide on your approach to an event like this from your, your kind of, your mental approach to it. So there are some people that take an event like the install enormously seriously, um, and there are others that, that are, are really quite relaxed about it and all, are just, and are just soaking up the experience. And Robert, you must have seen the, the full um, spectrum of, of people and, and the way that they approach and, and I think it can create problems in the team if there isn't a, an understood um, approach. And I've rallied with quite a few different people. Um, personally, I like to, to go to try and do as well as I can, but not to be too disheartened when we make a mistake. Uh, also, getting lost if you do take that wrong turn, having a backup plan, a little cheeky sat nav on your phone to get you back on route. But it is, like you say, important as a team to decide how you want to approach the event. Definitely. I, I, it felt like for us we, we had a go, yeah. but we didn't put too much pressure on, on ourselves. We, we made sure that we enjoyed the event, soaked it up. Um, and actually the, the, there were times where we, we perhaps were... Uh, we got to some good bits of road where they might have been timed and we, we perhaps thought that the roads were too good not to enjoy in a car like this and and so we might have gone a bit quicker than, than, than we, we should have but the point is we had great fun and, and we decided on our approach and and there was no imbalance in the car in terms of it, our view to it. Absolutely. So th uh, number three for us would be the groundwork you do in terms of understanding the event and how you approach it because they're all a little bit different, really. They are, yes. Yeah. So knowing um, what is expected of you when you arrive um, and the, the tone of the event, the type of route books that you're going to encounter. So if you can get hold of a previous year's route book, that's enormously helpful. Uh, and just understanding the trials that you're expected to, to achieve and having things like time and distance tables, if that's appropriate, or the right um, kit in your car. Um, and maybe have a practice. So that's something that we do is we take customers out, we create a little route, which is like a very small version of the rally, so that we can go and practice. I think that's all sensible, but I really meant where is breakfast, lunch and dinner? 
But there we go. So for number four, this is, for me, probably the most important thing out of anything you can do to ensure that you have a great event, and that's mechanical preparation. And it, it, it's one of those scenarios where you get this opportunity, this window. These kind of events only happen once a year. And so when your car is taken out to an event and you go to compete in it, you want to give yourself the best chance of completing the whole of, event, whole of the event. So Robert, yeah, I, that must be something that's critical. It is, absolutely. So you've got to have a car that is reliable. So in our case, we uh, test the cars thoroughly. So we check them, test them, uh, and make sure that they are as likely to complete the event as possible. So far this year, we've had a 100% finish rate, um, slightly better than last year. But, but it is very important to make sure your car is properly prepped. I mean, these are robust cars, but, but it is all in the prep, isn't it? But I mean, this really didn't miss a beat, did it? Um, but the guys were doing some bits in the background each night and just making sure that it was tip top for the following day. Yes. Yeah. And, and I have to say that age isn't necessarily a guarantee. So we do see more modern cars fail just as much, if maybe not more, than some of the, the earlier cars. So whatever era car that you're in, it's, it's vital to properly prep. And so the final point um, I think we probably want to make about entering a rally is you need some motivation to keep you going on those long days, particularly as we put up with sideways rain and all sorts. So what really kept our focus was finding a nemesis in the 200 cars that had entered. So there was somebody that we were always chasing and always making sure that we were ahead of. And um, it was tongue in cheek, but it was quite good fun. Absolutely, it? yes. <laughs> So hopefully that gives you just a little bit of a flavour of what it might be like to enter an event such as the Install Classic. And for me, as it wrapped up at the end of the whole event, I mean, it was so special. The, um, the town um, came out to see us. It was, it was literally closed down for this parade of Enstall cars driving around and around and doing final time sections. There was a real celebration um, of the event and the cars that entered it including a real nod to Aston Martin mm, absolutely. whilst we were there. Um, so I, I, for me, one of the most special things I've, I've ever done, and I would um, heartily encourage anybody who might have an interest in either entering with a specific car, because it, it, at Acuri Patelli, you can, you can support pre-war Astons, you can allow people to rent a seat, as it were, or you do, you do support other cars, don't you? Absolutely. So more modern cars, we're quite happy to support. This year, one of our team was running an AC Ace, so we don't limit it just to pre-war cars. Post-war cars are fine, preferably an Aston, but um, yeah, if you've got an interesting car that's eligible, we'd be very happy to support. Well, I have to say there's nothing cooler than after completing the event, having a cold beer and looking at an absolutely filthy car um, it just makes you smile doesn't it? there's something incredibly cool about it and for me personally thinking when can I go and do it again uh, definitely yeah I mean it, it, it instantly got me thinking straight afterwards yeah how do I go and do that again yeah yeah loved it so thank you Robert thank you Akiri Patelli um, and anybody who might have questions will leave contact details below um, should you want me to, to talk to me about it I will gladly um, bore you silly about it but it is uh, a phenomenal thing to do